Hi, so we want to find the minimum and maximum value of this function here, f of theta equals root 3 sine theta plus cos theta plus 7. And there's about three ways of doing this. So the first one and most common one is to take the derivative of this, and then from there we can find the minima and maxima. We can also graph this function here. So uh, I'm not sure what this will look like, but let's say this function looks like this, then we can easily tell what the maxima is and we can also see exactly what the minima would be here. But we are not going to use any of these two methods, we are going to use something else. And uh, the method we are going to use comes from a clue that the minimum value of sine or cosine, uh, uh, the, the, the sine and cosine range from negative 1 to 1. So what I'm going to do here is to express sine and cosine as one trigonometric function. It could be a sine or a cosine. And I'll do that uh, by using the compound angle formula. So I'm going to express this part here in form of R sine of some angle theta plus alpha, or I could actually use cos theta plus alpha, whichever you want. But I think this works better here since the expansion of sine theta plus alpha gives us sine theta somewhere and cosine theta. So we'll express this in form of R times sine theta plus alpha. Alpha is an arbitrary angle here. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So we know that R sine of theta plus alpha is actually R sine theta cos alpha plus R sine alpha cos theta. So if I just get this and I equate it to this, I'll show you what that is. So we have r sine theta cos alpha plus r sine alpha cos theta. I'll just make this to be equivalent to this. So that's root 3 sine theta plus cos theta. So from here we can equate this to this because we see the sine theta component here. So I'll just conclude that R cosine of alpha equals root 3 because the sine cancels. And then we also see from this, if I equate this to this, then I'll have R uh, sine of alpha equals just a coefficient of 1 there. All right, so from here we can find alpha, we can also find R. So I can call this equation 1 and this equation 2. So let's say I take, um, I take, I take equation 2 divided by equation 1. So 2 divided by 1 will have uh, tan alpha. So R divided by R cancels sine alpha divided by cos alpha. That's going to be 1 over root 3, which means alpha is just 30 degrees. Okay, and then still from equation 1 and 2, I can find R. So I'll get equation 1, I square it. I also get equation 2, I square it. So I'll have R squared cos squared alpha plus R squared sine squared alpha equals root 3 squared. That's 3 plus 1 squared. That's a 1. So factorize out R squared. We'll have cos squared alpha plus sine squared alpha equals 4. Of course, this is 1. We know that from Pythagoras theorem. So r squared equals 4. And we'll take r as 2. We'll take the positive square root. So it means that uh, root 3 sine theta plus cosine theta is the same as 2 sine 2 sine of theta plus 30 degrees, okay? And this whole function, f of theta, I uh, just get another color here. So this function, f of theta, is going to be, instead of this, I'll now write only this here. So 2 sine of theta plus 30 degrees plus 7. And we know, uh, we know that sine of theta plus 30 degrees ranges from negative 1 to 1. Of course, 
sine and cosine always have this property they never go beyond negative one and one so for this function to be a mean uh, uh, to have the minimum value of this function so we'll take this value we'll take sine uh, of theta plus 30 to have a value of negative one so i'll say for minimum for minimum value we'll have okay so for minimum value we have sine of theta plus 30 degrees equals to negative one so f of uh, theta in that case will be two times negative one plus seven which is a five so that's the minimum value of this function and of course for the maximum value for the maximum value we'll take sine of theta plus 30 degrees to be equal to its maxima which is one so I plug that in here, I'll have f of theta equals 2 times 1 plus 7, which is 9. So there we have it. The minimum value of this function is 5 and the maximum value is 9. So you can actually prove this if you plot this uh, using some graphing software like Wolfram Alpha. You'll see that the maximum for this function is 9 and the minimum is 5. Thanks for watching this video. If you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.